In this video, we're going to be reviewing the Ray-Ban Smart Glasses, also known as Ray-Ban Stories or the Facebook Smart Glasses. And this review is going to be different from all other reviews you've seen of this product on YouTube. I've been testing them out for six months, and yes, we're going to talk about the different technologies and features that come with the glasses that make them kind of the cool smart glasses to get, but there's also some issues with the lenses and the frames that I don't hear many people talk about. And these are things you should know about. So, are Ray-Ban stories worth it? Let's take a look. Hey, what's up everyone? Dr. Allen here from the Dr. Eye Health Show. And today, yes, we are going to be reviewing the Ray-Ban stories. Because here on this channel, we like to talk about eyes, help people with their vision, but I also like talking about different vision products that are out there. Because a lot of different eyewear and vision products, they can get expensive. And there are some that I just think you may want to stay away from. And that's really part of the whole service of this channel is I just want to help educate people and also hear from a person's perspective who's in the eye care business that just um, there's some things I, I, I'm just not a big fan of and this is one of them. Now, my whole point of this video is not to talk badly about something, especially because I know there are people who do like and maybe love this product and maybe you're somebody who's strongly considering getting a pair of these for yourself or for a family member or a friend. And um, yeah, they, they may help for some people, but let's talk about what's all packaged into this and like break down and give my argument of why they have a lot more ways to go to get this to be a really good product. First off, why Ray-Ban stories and why are smart glasses uh, kind of a growing thing? First of all, smart glasses are a growing trend in the eye care world because not only are you getting like smart watches and cool devices that are tracking your heart rate, keeping track of your emails and notifying you if something cool is coming out, there's even augmented reality glasses that are being made kind of along with the venture of virtual reality. No, the Ray-Ban stories do not have AR or augmented reality in them yet, but uh, I think that technology is just around the corner, so I'm excited to hopefully see that coming soon. So what do you get with Ray-Ban Stories? Why are these even a thing? Well, Ray-Ban Stories have first headphones built into the temples here. So you can put them on and listen to music or answer phone calls simply while wearing your glasses that are tethered through wirelessly through your phone. You can answer calls or change the music that you're listening to just simply by double tapping or tapping the sides here of the frame. You can even adjust the volume by sliding your finger back and forth. There are some kind of cool aspects of that. The one thing though is that the sound quality that you will get through here on the temples is, in my opinion, much less, um, how do I say it? Much more, much more less to be desired, much less. I'm not sure how to say that. The quality's not that good. Yes, if you have the volume turned up all the way, the sound is much better. You can hear it more clearly, but it doesn't have very much a bass at all if you're interested to any music that has more of a bass effect to it. And unfortunately, uh, I just think that you can get a better sound quality off of a $50 or $80 pair of Bluetooth headphones. And these are not the first pair of smart glasses that have come out that specialize with sound. Bose even has their own sunglasses, which in my opinion would have a better sound effect. Even an off-brand called Lucid, they have better sound and bass in the headphone component of their smart glasses. But personally, I did also find that there is a downside to the privacy aspect of listening to your headphones on these because Anybody who's around you can basically hear anything you're saying on a conversation, as well as hearing any of the music that you haven't been listening to. So if you are in a public spot, uh, just be prepared that everybody around you can, can also hear what you're doing. Just as an example of me talking normally here, I'm pretty close to the microphone, but then if I turn on the music, You get the idea. Which to me isn't much of a privacy thing for what I'm talking about, like if I'm in a phone call conversation, but it's more about, uh, I just don't wanna interrupt or disturb somebody else's peace with my theme music or something like that. But we all know there are people who carry around their Bluetooth headphone on max volume, uh, basically everywhere they go, cause they just, they again need their theme music playing all the time. Sometimes that theme music pretty awesome, but otherwise I think you know who I'm talking about. Now let's move on to the camera lenses. Now if you look up here in the top left or top right of the frame, they do have these small camera lenses, which are kind of a cool feature. That's one of the coolest things about these other than the Snapchat frames that are, exist uh, that kind of do the same thing. They either take photos or they record video with this little camera. 
These cameras are a five megapixel camera, so they do not produce the same qualities you'll get with most modern smartphones. And one of the biggest kind of awkward factors with these is that they were specifically designed to work with Facebook or Meta's entire like network for stories, whether it's a Facebook story or Instagram story. They record in a square format, which is a little awkward if you're making content for anything other than the stories platform. And if you're recording a video, it only takes it in 30 second clips, which if you're doing that, the four gigabyte kind of memory that's stored in this will only store up to about 50 videos then. Which isn't a huge deal, but it is just, again, it's a little awkward and cumbersome in my opinion. The picture quality of the videos, I don't mind. I think it in fact looks pretty good. They did seem to put in their own filter, where boosting the contrast as well as the saturation to really make colors and images pop and stand out in a way. I think that does make it convenient, but again, just the formatting and having to transfer that from the sunglasses to the specific Facebook View app, which you have to download and utilize to get the information from the frame into your phone before you can even start using it, that's also a little cumbersome. Now, if you are using the frames to just take photographs, the photo quality is just a little bit better, but it's a little bit more cumbersome because of the buttons on the side. It's not just like snap taking a photo. You in fact have to hold it down and then hold it for a few seconds before it takes the photo. Otherwise it prioritizes the button to actually start just recording a video, which personally I think it would be better if it was switched array around. So you just click a button to take a photo or you hold it down to take a video. I think that would be better. Because sometimes if you're in a quick situation, where you just want to take a photo really quick, you would just snap, um, but now you have to hold it down and then maybe your opportunity rush by you. <laughs> but there is also another feature, which is kind of cool, and that's that you can speak. You can say, hey, Facebook, start recording, and then it will start recording a video. And you can then say, hey, Facebook, stop recording a video. And same thing, you can tell it to take a picture as well. Now that ability to be completely hands-free and just talk to the camera and tell it to start recording, that does add some cool benefits to it in certain situations, which we'll talk more about, about that um, a little bit later in the video. But other than the Facebook View app that it comes with, it also features coming with a very cool Ray-Ban hard case for the glasses. And this is probably the best well-built uh, glasses case I've probably ever seen. It is made very durable, but it also is the charging dock for the glasses. So it has a little magnetic clip here in the temple that when you have it folded up, it does just fit right in and then it should start charging. Now it takes about three hours to fully charge from zero. And the sunglasses battery life does report on their website between three to six hours. If you're using them constantly with uh, talking with someone on the phone or taking video, it's gonna last maybe closer to three hours. But uh, if you're just using it moderately, uh, then it can last up to six hours. The one downside I would say about this case and the design of the frames, uh, specifically when it comes to charging, is even though this is really cool, what happens if you lose or break the case? then there's no possible way for you to charge these sunglasses and uh, you're just kind of out of that feature. I really wish that the USB-C plug-in for the case would also have a USB plug-in in the frame because then if you lost the case, then you could still charge the frame and still use it. That's just kind of a future thought if anybody who designs these is watching this video. All right, so we've talked all about the technology in the frames and why smart glasses or how these are smart glasses, uh, but let's talk about the lenses and the frame, something that most other people reviewing these types of products they don't know anything about and they never really discuss or talk about. Let's get into it. Now again, I've been using these for about six months and I am a sunglasses collector and so I have, I have a huge passion for the lenses and well as the frame design. The first big thing, the lenses. Now there are different lens colors and options available on their website. I did go into getting the Facebook blue, kind of the deep blue look, which is kind of like Facebook's colors, which is kind of a little bit more expensive. I will say I've never had blue lenses before and I do, in fact, like the blue tone of these. If you ever want to get kind of a blue lens, this is kind of unique. In bright summery days, it does kind of chill everything out a little bit, but on a dark gray kind of cloudy day, I'll let you know, it does kind of make things look a little depressing. But I've even handed these to like my stepmother and she absolutely loved the color on it. So it may be something to consider. 
As far as the lens material, they are a polycarbonate lens, which in my opinion, uh, yes, it has some cool advantages, like it's less likely to shatter or break if for some reason something hits it, but they are more likely to scratch. And unfortunately, polycarbonate just isn't the best like optical material. I don't feel like you see as sharply with polycarbonate as you do with many other materials, especially glass lenses. Which for me, if you're gonna get a dedicated pair of sunglasses, that really makes a difference. Otherwise, a couple of things about the lenses to note is that they are polarized, which I'm a huge fan of because that helps a lot with glare. If you've never seen my video about polarized versus non-polarized sunglasses, definitely encourage you to check that out. Otherwise, the lenses and the frame are designed and produced through the Essilor Luxottica conglomerate. They do know how to make good lenses. And so thankfully, as sunglasses, they do have a hydrophobic coating, uh, kind of an anti-scratch coating, but they also have anti-reflective on the back surface of the lenses, which is a sign that they know what they're doing. It's always a frustrating thing for me when I see a company making sunglasses and they don't have an anti-reflective on the back surface. The reason you want that anti-reflective is so that if the sun is sitting behind you, uh, it's not gonna reflect off the back surface of the lens and then bounce right into your eye. Part of the purpose of sunglasses is to protect your eyes from that UV light and that would just make things worse. Also, if you don't have an anti-reflective, you can sometimes see the reflection of your own eyeball on that back surface and that can be distracting too. But let me say this, the biggest issue with the lenses in these frames is the fact that you cannot replace them. One of the best things about a good pair of sunglasses or glasses frames is that if the lenses break or you scratch them, you can have them replaced. But if you try to replace these ones, you void the warranty. And that even it fits for if you get a prescription pair of sunglasses. And yes, you can get these made in prescription and unfortunately, what happens in one, maybe two years if your prescription changes? Oh, well, I guess if you want these, you're gonna have to buy a whole new frame because again, it voids the warranty. Also because of just the frame design, it's like so thick of plastic, it's nearly impossible to get the lenses out. So that right there is a big red flag, I say, for a lot of people. Now let's move on to the frame itself. And there's a lot of issues with the Ray-Ban Stories frame uh, that we're gonna break down into. First of all, they are based off of Ray-Ban designs. That's why Meta or Facebook teamed up with Luxottica because they own the Ray-Ban frame and it's one of the most popular sunglasses brands that have ever existed. They do come in the Ray-Ban Wayfair design as well as the Wayfair Round, which is the frame that I have. Right away, one of the biggest issues, and this is an issue I have with pretty much all smart glasses that are out there right now, is how big the temples are. I will give the Ray-Ban stories this little positive about the frame design, is that yes, the temples are thick, but compared to other brands like the Bose frame, as well as Lucid and other smart glasses, uh, Amazon has their Echo glasses, the temples are all very, very thick. These are probably the most like ergonomically designed ones, but they still are a bit thick. And that's because they have to house all the technology, the headphones, the Wi-Fi receiver, all of that information, as well as just the processing chips for the camera lenses. That all has to be stored somewhere, right? But with how thick the temple frames are, when somebody wears them, me being in the eye care world, I, I definitely notice that they're thicker than usual. And I personally just think it looks a little bit awkward. Uh, however, the positive note is that despite all this cool technology, they aren't super heavy. So there's at least that little positive I can throw in there. But because of how thick the temple frames are, that does add to a little bit of a complicating factor, which we'll get to talk about in just a second. But first, I do wanna mention the hinges. The hinges on these frames are robust. They are beefy. They in fact have multiple like hinges built into it, which is really good because again, that protects some of the wires and technology in there, but there is a problem. And you can see this right here because on this side, this is still pretty tight on this side here on the hinge. Uh, and so it can hold its own and I love that. But on this side, it is weak and it can just flop anywhere it wants. And I like to tighten that. But how they design these frames, they have a six pointed star screw in the hinge which if you've never heard before, that's called a Torx screw. And those are some of the hardest screwdrivers to find. In fact, I can tell you in all opticals or glasses shops, eye clinics I've ever been to, I have never seen a Torx screwdriver in any of those clinics, let alone one small enough to fit for the hinges of a pair of glasses. But get this, let's say you were able to find a clinic or even go online and buy some Torx screwdrivers yourself that would fit for this. You need not just one, you need 
two of them in order to tighten this. You need one for each side. Why they designed it that way, I have no idea. So basically, there's no way for me to tighten this unless I wanted to invest in a couple of new screwdrivers for myself. But I personally have seen a lot more screws like this in a lot of technology that is made in China, which these frames are made in China. So uh, perhaps there's a superiority of that screw that I'm not aware of, but it just makes it very difficult for adjustments in terms of glasses. Now, moving on to adjustments, that's probably the biggest challenge and frustration I have with these frames. With all forms of glasses, whether you're getting prescription or single vision sunglasses with no prescription, you wanna have them adjusted. Most people's ears are not level. Usually people have one ear above the other. And so having them fit well so that they're comfortable is really important. And for that, you need to have them professionally adjusted to fit your face. Otherwise, like for me, if I put these on and go running, they're constantly falling down my nose. So it'd be great to listen to my music while running and wearing sunglasses. But again, as I'm running, they're just again, constantly it's, it's really annoying. Now the challenge is that because of how thick these temples are, it's very hard to adjust. And even more so because if you do bring them into a professional, like in our eye clinic, my opticians were terrified to even start adjusting this because they know that there's technology and computer chips built into this. So if you don't just naturally fit comfortably to these frames, like if they're pushing on the back of your temples here behind your ear and you're getting headaches, Sorry, you might not be able to adjust that. Even the nose bridge here in the middle, if you try to heat this up as we usually do in the clinic to try and make some adjustments, that's terribly close to the lenses, which you can't replace. And if there's too much heat put to the lenses, you could craze the lenses and damage them. So again, really hard to adjust. Now just an insider side note, most opticians I know, they don't really like Ray-Ban frames to begin with as sunglasses, not even the Ray-Ban stories, but just typical Ray-Ban frames because they are so difficult to adjust because the typical frame design is a little bit thicker. But just as a side note, I'll also mention that compared to a dedicated pair of just strict Ray-Ban sunglasses compared to the Ray-Ban stories, I think just the plastic and the build quality of these outside of the hinges, are just a little bit lacking. I think if you get a dedicated true pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses made in Italy with their glass lens, it's gonna be an overall better pair of sunglasses than these alone. All right, so we've talked about the technology and the features in the Ray-Ban stories, and we've talked about the lenses and frames. So are the Ray-Ban stories worth it? Well, for 299 US dollars for just a base pair or 329 for the cool Facebook blue color that I got here, Ugh, it's tough for me to justify it. The reason that I say that is again, the sound quality of the headphones is not as good as a pair of like 50 to $80 pair of like earbuds or Bluetooth headphones that you can purchase. The sunglasses, in my opinion, are not the best quality, especially considering the price. I think you could probably get a pair of 30 or 50 US dollar pair of sunglasses and probably get about the same quality. Yeah, you wouldn't have the Ray-Ban name on the side, but still the quality is about that price mark. And then the video quality that you get out of these lenses are just not that good. And besides, you need to sync up your sunglasses with your phone, so that means your phone's with you anyway, and I'm just gonna prioritize taking good video quality with my phone. So for me personally, I just never really found a true good use for these. On occasion, there were some situations where I have found these to be kind of cool to have, especially in those scenarios where I could be hands-free. If you could be skateboarding, riding a bike, uh, or even though it says in the instructions, don't use those features while you're driving. There were some times where I was almost hit by some other driver and I could just say, hey, Facebook, take a video and I could record this car kind of like driving recklessly. And then I might have some form of uh, kind of dash cam footage to use for insurance purposes or something. Those were probably the best uses scenarios. Uh, if you're in somebody who just needs hand-free video recording for some reason, uh, then perhaps there's that kind of cool feature of these. Or maybe you're somebody who just does a lot of Facebook and Instagram stories then again, I can see kind of this extra benefit. <laughs> or maybe if you happen to be Casey Neistat, then again, that might be something. The way I think about it is I could buy a even cheaper pair of $30 pair of sunglasses, then buy a better pair of headphones than what's built into this for like $50 to $80, and then just use my phone for all the video quality, 
And so really I just ended up spending like, what, $110, $120. It's just difficult for me to justify a $340 pair of sunglasses. Then of course, if you wanted to have prescription lenses put into this, that's an additional $240. And if you wanted progressive no-line bifocals put into these, that's an extra $340. And then again, you can't change out the lenses if your prescription changes, and you can't have them adjusted. So to me, it's just not worth it. Now maybe if, as smart glasses go, these end up in the future, they have augmented reality, uh, that might be a whole different thing, then, then perhaps the price would be justified. But with augmented reality, we're talking about a whole new ball game, a whole changing paradigm of eye care and vision and human experience and interaction. That's, that may completely change our world. You know what's funny is I just remembered we didn't even talk anything about the privacy aspect of these with recording video. Now that is an issue that I know a lot of people kind of blew up about when these first released uh, back about six months ago. But when you do record video on them, they do have this little LED marker in the top just to let people know that you might be recording or spying on them with it. Which may not be a huge deal, but I know some people it does kind of freak them out. Now someone could argue you saying, hey, I'm a fan of Ray-Bans, I want a new pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses, that cost me about $200. And only for an extra $100, I can get all these cool technology features. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think maybe if these alone, if they weren't Ray-Ban specials or Ray-Ban stories specifically, then around $100, $120 is probably their value just with the technology in my opinion. But honestly, if you're that interested in having some of the new technology that's in here and all the different smart glasses, you may wanna look into some of the other options. Again, Bose, Lucid, and even the Amazon Echo ones. They're all kind of in that same boat. Until, of course, we have the augmented reality ones. Maybe Apple's be into that. I've heard things. We'll see. But hey, I encourage you to let me know in the comment section what makes or breaks these as smart glasses for you. Any of the things that we mentioned you think definitely a deal breaker, or maybe you have a different opinion. Maybe you think these are definitely worth it, or if there's something you could add to it, something that you would change that would make them worth the 320, 330 benchmark of what I paid, let me know. Otherwise, no, I have not returned them. I'm still gonna keep these just as kind of a token, a reminder of where things have started. And I do, again, personally enjoy the blue lenses. I do occasionally wear them. But more often than not, I use them as just a typical pair of sunglasses and not for the smart glasses component. Hey, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If this video brought value to you, definitely hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. Otherwise, again, this is Dr. Allen here from the Dr. Eye Health Show. Keep an eye, um, wow. Keep an eye on it, and we'll talk to you soon.